What's up guys, it's Russ from Backyard Boatwork. So in this video, I'm gonna go through step-by-step -step how I repaired this Paramount center console. So a customer dropped it off with extensive damage and you can see here that there's major cracks going on and he wants me to fix all, fill in all these holes here so he can add his own rigging. This is gonna be filled in with acrylic and gauges. So we're just cleaning up some of the um, spider cracks on the side here you can see where there was some old speakers, speaker holes. Um, he's adding a T-top, so I did add some reinforcement to the inside um, to support the T-top. Uh, you can see on the side here also there was some speakers cut and we filled that in. And some damage on the front door. So here I just got started cutting some cardboard templates that I'm going to use to make um, pieces out of marine grade plywood to fill in these areas on the dash. I wanted to make sure I got a very tight fit on these pieces so that I didn't have to worry about bracing them into place on the top and the bottom but you'll see here as I cut a couple of them I actually did cut the blank the blank filler pieces a little too small and I did end up having to hold them up um, with some brackets until I was able to put some glass on it to hold it into place so here I'm just using a flap disc on my four and a half inch grinder taken off a little by little until I got the fit that I wanted and it made a press fit to hold itself into place So I used three quarter inch marine grade plywood to fill in these blank holes because the plywood gives a very strong um, core to mount the, the steering and the throttle and things like that. And this area here had plywood in it from the beginning. So it was best just to replace it with plywood. Um, the three quarter inch I believe was what the core had when the console was originally made. So it fit in there. Um, very well, but you'll see when I fill in the speaker holes. I use a different material But plywood here uh, was the best choice for this keep in mind that a lot of this is going to get cut back out again Once he mounts the steering wheel the throttle all of his rigging um, But the plywood here made um, Made the best choice so you see here I'm fumbling with some painter sticks and the reason that is is because I did cut this uh, filler piece a little bit too thin so now it's just dropping through the hole. So I just screwed this uh, one by two piece of pine to the top and I used some painter sticks to use as a spacer underneath because you want the filler plywood piece to sit slightly underneath the lip so that the glass um, will will fill in the gap if the plywood was up towards the top um, there'd be two the, there wouldn't be enough glass in order to get it straight so here I'm just cleaning it up with some acetone and prepping for the first layer of glass I'm just going to be using polyester resin and 1708 biaxial and some of those screws poked through the bottom so I'm just cleaning that up here as well this is a product that I like to use a lot it's from a company called fiberglass Florida and it's their radius putty so this is a polyester base almost like a body filler but this um, filler stays tacky for a very very long time which is good when you're doing polyester work because you really want these polyester products to be put on wet on wet you don't want to put polyester over the top of 100% cured polyester. So here I'm just filling in the gaps on the back side of the filler so that the biaxial will lay flat. And then I just put a little bit more of it in some of the larger gaps on the top as well. And then I proceeded to cut or measure and cut out all the pieces of glass that I'm going to need to start laying up over these filler pieces. So while I was doing this work, it was in the middle of the summer in South Florida and it was upper mid to upper 90s, high humidity. So I'm only mixing up about eight ounces of polyester at a time. I mean, it really can't work much more than that outside in this heat. So 
I just laid some on the top and the bottom, uh, let it saturate a little bit. I could have gotten the edges a little bit more wet, but I'm going to be putting some more glass on it here. As you see, having some difficulty getting it to initially stay because it's upside down. But just have some patience with the chip brush in it and it'll finally go into place. So I did get some air bubbles on this part of the lamination. I think there was two layers here and you'll see here on the left side um, there's some air bubbles but it's not a it's not a structural piece it's not a big deal and keep in mind that most of this is going to get cut out anyways when he goes and reinstalls his steering wheel so some of these air bubbles might just get cut out in the process I wasn't really stressing uh, this that much and I ended up just leaving it the way that it was I think maybe I added one more coat uh, one more layer of 1708 and then I was done with the bottom side So I just wanted to walk through some of the things um, to look for while prepping your fill pieces. So you see here I got a nice almost a quarter of an inch lip between the filler piece and the original top of the glass. So you want to make sure that you have that so that you don't have the plywood right up close to the top of the finished layer. So here you can see the spacer that I used underneath this, this bracket piece just to drop the filler piece down so that I ended up with it at least about an eighth to a quarter inch gap. So we're gonna be filling all of this in with glass because we, we want a good layer of glass to cover over this plywood. Um, and that will give us a good repair. And you can see here, this is the fiberglass Florida radius compound. And it's very, very hot, but it's still tacky. So most laminating polyester resins are going to stay tacky for about 24 hours. But in the South Florida heat, I really wouldn't advise putting um, polyester over the top of polyester that's been sitting for more than 12 hours. Um, again, it's just personal preference. You'll, I'm sure you'll um, hear different opinions from different people, but if it does cure, you can just come back and sand it with 36 grit and you'll be fine. So then I started taking out these um, brackets that were holding these pieces into place because the glass underneath is now holding the, them up and I'm just making some templates to cut the glass that I'm going to use to fill in that eighth inch to quarter inch gap on the dash. So I'm just cutting the pieces to fit on the insides of pretty much mat matching the shape of the template. And I'm gonna use three or four layers of 1708 just to build that up so it gets to the top of that lip. And then I'll start putting bigger pieces over the top and then layering it with chop strand mat. Um, here I'm using some more fiberglass Florida just to fill in some of the thick um, gaps in between the plywood and the original console and then I move on to doing the lamination. So you might be wondering what's the point of filling in these gaps with the putty and really it is just to hold the glass up so it doesn't fall down into those crevices. Um, it can, it's not a real big deal, it's just going to cause a low spot there and then you're going to have to work around it later. So it's easier just to fill in those gaps with some putty and then get your glass as level as you possibly can as you add your layers of lamination. So here I'm pre-wetting the areas where I'm going to lay down glass. So I just use the chip brush, put a little bit on there and then lay the 1708 in place and then use the chip brush just to saturate the little pieces and take out any of the air bubbles. You can use a, a thin roller wheel to take out any air bubbles, but these are very small pieces and I was able to get all the air bubbles out with just using the chip brush. So 
So after about three or four layers of 1708, I switched to a, a one and a half ounce chop strand mat for the bigger pieces. And then I start to get bigger and bigger and then taper it out to that areas to that area there where you see where I ground. And the reason that is is because the chop strand mat's gonna make it easier for you to blend this repair into the existing gel coat or paint, whatever the white is on your console. So now I move um, down to fixing these cracked pieces and I'm using my one and an eighth inch Makita mini belt sander. And I like using this because I can be pretty precise with it and it doesn't kick up as much fiberglass dust as a flap disc or an orbital sander would. So then again, I moved on to just cutting some of the 1708 that I'm gonna to use to, to repair this piece. So I cut a bunch of pieces for the inside and the outside. I think I ended up putting six layers on the inside and about four layers on the outside. This is a very um, structural part of this console and I wanted to make sure that none of these cracks were gonna come back. So I went extra heavy with the laminate in this area um, just to build this up and put the strength back to where um, you know the damage was caused. So a little close up view after the resin has tacked off and I left a little bit extra here as you can see um, and then on the back side it was probably about six layers I think on the inside um, then I'm going to use my cutoff tool um, to make that corner uh, rounded again all right so now I'm moving on to filling the speaker holes opening so I'm going to be using a honeycomb product called Nidacore or carbon core and you can see here that the coring on this console on the sides is thinner than the coring um, where the steering wheel and the rigging on the dashboard goes so I've got this material that more closely matches the thickness of the sides of the console so I cut this little piece out here and then I'm going to laminate this um, top and bottom and then I'm going to cut pieces to fill in these square and circle holes. Um, the honeycomb is super lightweight um, and it's very easy to work with. So here I'm just laying some polyester down over the surface of the honeycomb um, composite panel and then I lay the 1708 with the chop strand side down then add a little bit more glass and then I'm going to use my thin roller just to roll out all the excess, make sure that there's no air trapped underneath the surface, let that dry, and then I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side. A little tip here, if you use some baby powder on your hands and your legs or any of your ex exposed skin, um, it'll help with the itching um, later on in the evening. So here I just put a little bit on to get ready to cut some of these pieces. If it wasn't so hot, I might wear some long sleeve or long sleeves and some long pants. Um, but at 100 degrees, I just went with the baby powder. So here is where I made a mistake that end up, ended up actually biting me later is I used epoxy to hold these pieces into place. Epoxy is not necessary for this. I could have used a polyester based adhesive, but the epoxy did cause me some issues later. So here I'm just using my oscillating tool just to cut off the pieces that I made. Then I'm gonna use the belt sander to round off that edge. So then I took the belt sander out again and started taking off some of the heavy spots of the filler pieces. And the belt sander here comes in really handy because you can lay it flat and it almost acts, acts as like a, a sanding block um, to get it down pretty level. 
Then I'm using some fiberglass floor again on these top pieces where there was a compass mounted and I'm just gonna laminate these very similar to how I did on the dashboard. So another tip here, and you can see where I have the polyester resin around the edges of this repair. It's very hard to sand laminating polyester resin because it's designed to stay sticky almost eternally. Um, it won't fully cure until it's um, sealed 100% um, from the air. Um, so something that I didn't show and I should have showed is I sealed these repairs with some PVA, which is polyvinyl alcohol, and that causes the laminating resin to cure 100%. You can add some wax to your resin as well, and the wax will, the wax will rise to the surface and um, cause the polyester resin to cure 100%. But the problem with adding wax to anything in your project is the wax can always come and bite you in the ass later when you're laying down primer or paint. I would never add wax to any resin that I was using in a repair. So just going around and looking at all the repairs that I made and everything looks um, pretty solid. Then I moved on to a lightweight filler and you want to try to use as little filler as possible because filler does have a certain level of shrinkage and the more filler you have the more likely you're going to see the repair pop up later. Now, if you're using a ton, a ton of filler um, to fill your low spots, it's going to sink and you're going to see a divot. So you only you want to try to do all your repairs with as much glass as possible and use as little filler as you possibly can. So here I moved on to using a five and a half inch DA and then I moved on to a long um, block sander and manual sanding is not fun but unfortunately it's one of the best ways to get a perfectly flat and smooth surface. I could have used a guide coat um, for that sanding but I did it all just by feel. So here in the front there was some gouges and some gel coat cracks um, which I dug out. Um, but I wanted to try to avoid getting any of the filler um, in areas where I would end up having to go and sand it off later. So I just used some tape here to tape off the areas where I want to put the filler and then it made it easy for me to have a nice clean filler repair. So you can see here the tape made it a nice clean um, filler application. And then I moved on to more block sanding. I didn't film a lot of that, but there's several, several hours of block sanding filler, more sanding block filler, but you can see the repairs are pretty smooth or you can just take my word for it. So I did a lot more sanding and then I moved on to shooting some primer. So the customer just wanted it in primer um, and he was gonna do the paint on his own. So all the repairs came out pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this little step-by-step -step on repairing this console. And if I missed anything or had some details that you're not quite sure about, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to respond best that I can. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.